Hebrews 2, 6, read it as we. But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visited him? Let's read that part um, A, um, or part B. What is man? Y'all ready? Let's read it again. What is man that thou art mindful of him? All right, Galatians um, 5 and 7. Amen. We've all marked it, so let's read it. Ye did run away. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? Father, we thank you that your word is already blessed, it's anointed, it's, it is true. Father. We bind the enemy that will try to bring some form of distraction. Uh, God, I need a fresh anointing from you. Anoint this teaching, God, uh, that it may come forth the way that you want it done. Uh, we thank you, God, that we have the victory through Christ Jesus. And God, we just give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God a praise if you can. your mouth and give God a After me, the enemy, the enemy called, called me. me. Jesus. Come on, let's say that again. The enemy, the enemy called, called me. me. A couple people look at me like, mm -hmm. we're going to make it clear. Amen. Some of you who are in the spirit, you already heard it, you already know it. You can close the book and take an offering with some of y'all. But we're not going to do that right now. Amen. I want to set some stuff in place and define some things to help you understand when you hear certain things as a teach. Here Paul was dealing with a spirit in the church of Galatia where it was called Galatianism where they were mixing law with grace. Um, he, he was trying to talk to the people about those who were um, flowing in Judaism and there were some false teachers who were you know coming against what Paul was trying to teach them about the power and authority that came through Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Yeah. Yeah. The devil's grace. There's no longer ceremonialism where you have to wash your hands before you eat and, and, and the hoofed animals and, and, and things of that stuff. And, I, and, and you know, Jesus said, you know, why would you call unclean what I said is clean That's after funny. you have blessed it or graced it? Yeah, or for some of us who don't understand, yeah. pray over it. That's right. Amen. Amen. And so you look back that they were so concerned, and when I say they, those who he was talking to at the church at that time about what certain people were teaching, and, and you know, there was this opposition going back and forth. You know, who's right and who's wrong. And, and, and look at your, your, your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. When, you know when you know the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth. through the word. That you're so concerned of. But that word hinder. You did run well. But who did hinder you? That word hinder means to beat back. It means to beat back, and also it says, as in a course of a ship. Now, Paul relates a lot of stuff with a athletic kind of theme. You know, you did run well. Uh, the race is not given to the swift or the strong, but they that do 
endure to the end. Amen. And you know, we, we, we listen to that and we think about being physically fit and, and running a race and, and some of us being out of shape, you know, and I can't run th three blocks without, you know, <laughs> being winded. Yeah, right. But he is really talking about a spiritual ability to endure. Yeah. To go through, yeah. to be able to handle and, 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 and deal with the things that you encounter in life. Yeah. I've said this before and I'm going to say it again. I hope that somebody will actually get this. As a born again believer, I don't care how young you are or how old you are in Christ. The moment you get your mind made up and your heart fixed that I'm going to serve the Lord. Yeah. To the fullness and with yeah. gladness that, that, okay, I've overcome this hurdle and, yeah. and I've gotten delivered from this and now I recognize that there's something else in my face. There's always going to be something in our face yeah. that we got to address in our life. Yeah. See, I, I, heard, I heard Pastor Lord C. Byer say, none of us have our ticket punched. Yeah. None of us. None of us. Right. Everybody from the pulpit to the back yeah. door, from the choir yeah. law to the music stand, we all got stuff yeah. that we have to work on. Amen. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. But see, this thing about spiritual serving the Lord, there, there, there comes a spiritual stamina that only comes through praying and fasting and, yeah. and studying the word. Yeah. It's good that we come in here and, yeah. and we, we collectively come together and we enjoy ourselves when, the, when, 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 when Mr. Yeah. Riley Fangler tickles those ivories over there and, 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 and when Mr. Brobo get the bump bumping on them, oh. on them tubs over there, it's all good. Yeah. But, but, but what are you getting to carry away with you yeah. when you leave out here? Yeah. The moment you step in the parking lot and the devil confronts you, yeah. when the yeah. same person that was foaming at the mouth but they got delivered of the same person that was running around the church press you out in the parking lot. Go there, yeah. Go there. Go there. Go there. Yeah. How are you going to deal with that? Right. Are you going to cuss back? Or oh, oh, have you, did you come in here like a sponge, man, a dry sponge, and you absorbed everything that was being taught or preached and imparted to you that, um, Go ahead, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Satan the Lord rebuke you. That's, it. That's the devil. That's no, so it's not, brother, I'm not saying you are the devil, but you're giving room, you're giving place yeah. to the devil. Yeah. Yeah. To myself, that's maturity. That's, maturity. that's spiritual growth. That's spiritual growth. Um, okay, all right. Amen. The enemy's only M O. The enemy's only method of operation is to come to hinder. Pastor shares this from the old church. She says the old mother said he come to hinder. Yeah. You know, they used to say these saying man back sometimes you thought they were really speaking in tongue, but he come to hinder. He come to hinder. I'm like, he who? <laughs> See, when I was coming to church, man, all they did was hoop and holler and scream and, and scared the devil out of you. Uh, I, I, I think about my pastor, man, back there, St. Mark Church of God in Christ. They had these high podiums, high pulpits, and then had these little railings that come around, and then he had about a 14 and a half shoe. Back then, they, I ain't gonna say they didn't have alligators and all that, but they, they wore them Stacy Adams. Yeah. You know, they, 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 they wore, we called them the kangaroos. That's what the dudes yeah. called them, but they were Stacy Adams. You know what I'm talking about, bro? Yeah. Yeah, man, I had a yeah. pair, because uh, my daddy used to wear them, so I don't want to wear shoes like my dad. But anyhow, I, now I'm understanding that it was at the climax yeah. of the message. Mm -hmm. He was standing up on the railing of, 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 of that little banister that was going around the pulpit, and, and he was standing up, and, and, and we just knew, I knew it, how it was getting ready to come. But man, my pastor would jump like Superman, leap in the air, and, and went, huh? <laughs> and the church would go crazy. <laughs> and, 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 and I'm like, Oh Jesus, did he hurt himself? <laughs> you know, and, 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 and they didn't have a lot of carpet on the floor. Amen. But then 14 and a half would hit the floor. <laughs> and my sister was 
about the crime. But while my sister crying, I was saying so it is. And so they would say things like, he come to hinder. You got to keep an eye on him. And I'm like, keep an eye on who? <laughs> and so now as we have grown and matured and understand that, uh, I, I, I enjoy preaching, y'all. I enjoy listening to good good preaching. But give me something that I can hold on to. Are, are y'all hearing me? And so the devil, he comes to hinder. His M.O. is to hinder us for the purpose of putting into play or initiating John 10.10. 10. Yeah. And that is that he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Yeah. Yeah. But then Jesus turned around and said, hold up, but you got to understand that I got a purpose of being here. I have a reason of being in your life. That you may have this life and have it more abundantly to the full, to the overflow. So his purpose of hindering us, his, his purpose of, of trying to, to beat us back, uh, to, 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 to hinder our course of progression, hello y'all, yeah. is to keep us from enjoying, experiencing yeah. that life of abundance. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. But he can only accomplish this through a means or measure to people who have given him place. To people who have a, a, a lack of spiritual resistance. Uh, are y'all hearing me? See, the Bible says, it, it says that if you resist him, this is James, the third chapter, but if you go back, it says, first of all, it says, but if you Submit yourself to God. Yes. See, we, 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 we have our little pet scriptures and stuff, but there's always a prerequisite. Yes. If you submit yourself, if you yield yourself, give yourself over to the Spirit of God, the Word of God, the power of God, then you have the spiritual endurance to resist Him. Yeah. And when you resist Him, give Him the hand, the chicken neck, and all that stuff, yeah. He gonna flee. Y'all, yeah. y'all, y'all listen to what I'm saying. Yeah. He'll flee. But then he back it up and said, well, give Him no place. That's right. Don't open the door of your mind. That's right. Stop having conversations with Him. Yeah. Stop having breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack, brunch, midnight snack with the devil. Because yeah. all he can do is lie. Yeah, yeah there are bills stacked this high uh -huh. and money stacked that high. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's truth. Yeah. But see, we don't live by the truth and hear me, y'all, the attacks of the enemy in our, in our, in our mind. Yeah. We live, as God as Jesus said, Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Yeah. Every word that's going to be coming out of the mouth of God in each and one of you. Yeah. According to Psalm 82, 6, we are what? We are God's little, it's a little G-O-D. We are God's in the earth. Yeah. And so you're supposed to live according to every word of God that come out of your mouth. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, stop giving him place in your mind. That's the only way he can come, y'all. That's the only door, that's the only avenue, that's the only street he can travel down. It's in your mind. Somebody said, Lord, help me to sanctify my mind. Now, here Hebrews yeah, the second chapter in verse 6. What is man that thou are mindful of him that he can hinder you? That word mindful. Paul is basically dealing with the insignificance, the insignificance of individuals. People who we have allowed ourselves to be around that dictates to our life and where we go and where we don't go. Uh -huh. go ahead, how we see and how we don't see. Go ahead. Oh, nobody do me like that. Uh -huh. <coughs> we 
talk about player haters. Yeah. People drinking hater aid. Yeah. Let me give you an example. How many of y'all, don't raise your hand, have had somebody in your life to ask you why you go to church all the time? Oh my God. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. That's yeah. How many of you all have had someone that you may know of or come around you that have presented themselves, said something to you uh, 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 to cause you to second guess your standards and your integrity in God. Uh -huh. Not saying you gave into it. Amen. Female that could be doing that time where you're so vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. That he might be 6'5 and uh, 100 and, uh, 210 pounds. He's Carmel or he's dark chocolate. He got wavy hair. He got a bald head. He's driving a Lexus or a Lamborghini and he just Brother, she be working on the job. And you've been celibate for so many years. And y'all brothers got to learn that we have a cycle too. Amen, God have I learned in the past 10 years. Come on now. We have a cycle too. And look. She, you, you've been working on a job for the past 20 years and it never affected you. But this day, here comes the devil. Jumping on what's going on inside of you chemically. Come on, y'all. Yeah. And she comes over there to your cubicle or wherever it may be. Maybe on the front porch across the street from you. Hello. She's 6'1. 135 pounds, 34, 24, 38. Oh, I'm just putting up. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, y'all hear what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying, brother? And, 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 and the bench and the beauty parlor. Hello. Amen. And when she came in, she stopped, turned around, and looked like something was on the floor and went. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, up in here. I oh, mean, y'all ain't with me. <laughs> you cannot afford to give him in his space in your mind. Amen. And so, some of us end up dependent upon being around folk. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we allow people to, to speak into our lives and you don't even know they're speaking into your life right. because they're saying stuff. They're, sometimes people purposely say stuff around uh, you. Amen. Amen. God, y'all better hear what I'm saying. People who are who are who are host for the devil and don't know at that time that they're being used by the devil. And 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 they begin to say stuff and, and then you begin to go home. Well, is she saying that so and so said something about me? Jesus. Yeah. That's how you do it. Did he go back and Tell somebody something about me. Yes. Hello, y'all. And so now you're sitting there with all this going on in your head. Yes. Hair started falling out and wrinkles on your eyes because you can't see. Because you worrying about what somebody may have said about you. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. You find yourself interacting with folk on the job or, or, or in your community because they say certain things that make you feel good. Mm -hmm. I've learned this from my wife. Wise women like to, 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 to hear nice things. Yes. Wives like to hear their husband every once in a while. And every once in a while, what I'm learning, might have to be every day or every other day. I love you. Amen. 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 
You looking good, baby. Yes. Am I gaining too much? Head to the low, baby. No, no, no. No. <laughs> no. I ain't trying to start a world for the world to decide. Oh, no, no. If you was, I ain't gonna We at times, as, as people, Pastor Medina and, 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 and teaching, let's give out a hand clap, on, on, on relationships. Nobody wants to be lonely. But loneliness is a spirit. Because as a child of God, we're never alone. Lo, I'll be with you. Y'all listen to all these Bible scholars up in here. Lo, I'll be with you. I didn't tell you how to get in that airplane. I said, Lo. He didn't mean for me to fly. He said, Lo, I'll be with you. But he said, I'll be with you always until the end. Don't worry about it because you ain't got a husband. Don't worry about it right there because you don't have a wife. Hello, don't worry about it because she left you and you won't mind her anyhow. You got a wife in him. You have a husband in him. I'm reminded even now by the Holy Spirit that when, when, when I got my little game on and I find a smooth pastor back then, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> She shared the testimony of how because she was married to Christ and she was really caught up in him that the one good thing about being without a husband or mate at that time was she had a whole bed to herself. Mm -hmm. She could sit there and have her books here, her commentaries here, her different Bibles there to study and, yeah. and she was saying how the enemy attacked her one night, you know, and she literally could feel God wrap his arms around her. Mm -hmm. yeah. She said, I could feel it, honey. And so he just rocked me and created me his arms until I went to sleep. And I woke up in the morning the time to get ready for work. Mm -hmm. He didn't do that, child. Amen. Amen. He would do just that. Amen. Young people Amen. that are easily influenced with all this negativity that these rappers and these these, these um, artists are, are putting out here and all of these different uh, um, mega uh, um, people who, who, who are movie stars and, and, and the enemy is trying to fascinate you with, with their lifestyles and wearing their name on your butt and on your chest and on the side of their shoes and stuff. You know, God has a way to keep you. Yeah. Yeah. If you want him to keep you. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. You young people who want somebody to like you and, and be your friend. And there's no friend that's sticking close to the brother like Jesus. Because yeah. these friends that you think you got, ask them to give you a couple thousand dollars. Uh -huh. That's right. Ask them to give you them hundred or two hundred, three hundred dollar shoes they got on their feet. Uh -huh. You find out what kind of friend they are. Hello. Let it be a hot day and they down to their last little bit of cold water in their bottle and you ask them to give it to you. You'll find out what kind of friend they are. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. But I just want to serve notice on the spirit that comes to your mind is that he is a greater friend than you could ever have. Yeah. And he'll keep you if you let him. Yeah. He ain't gonna do nothing that you don't let him do. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Hmm. We have to catch ourselves uh -huh. when we get involved with people. Because the enemy knows certain things about us, but he's not all knowing. And he knows some of our vulnerabilities. Yeah. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. And so we can't get to a, to a position in our in our lives that where we are socially, economically, or spiritually hooked uh, 
on having to be around somebody, going somewhere, or doing something. Amen. Oh God, did y'all hear what I said? Amen. Can I show you something? Amen. Let's go to um, 1 Corinthians, the 16th chapter. 1 Corinthians 16 chapter. Because some of us, even right now, we're in relationships that I know the Spirit of God has told us that we need to cut it. Some of us go certain places, the Holy Spirit has told us, don't go there no more. Amen. Some of us are saying things and repeating things that the Spirit of God has told us to shut our mouths. Yeah. But you get so used to doing something for the sake of time. Uh, I'm not going to take time to bring y'all up to snuff of what Paul was dealing with. He says, I beseech you, brothers, ye know the house of Stephanus, that it is the what, y'all? It is the first fruit of Achaia, and that they have what? Amen. That they have what? Amen. They have what? Amen. That everybody, they have what? Amen. Addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Amen. Good God of mercy. Mm -hmm. Addicted here means to be put under another's control. Mm -hmm. Oh God. And see, all this is, is, is dealing with unity. That's see, That's you know, I, I may not have put this out here in the beginning when I was putting my foundation out, but the enemy is fighting you with you to keep you from walking in oneness. Amen. Oneness with the Word of God, oneness with your leadership, oneness with the Spirit of Christ with inside of you. Amen. I see just by watching and listening to people of God. Yeah, you say. But there is a great division on the inside of you yeah. that's unbelievable. Yeah. The things that I watch people struggle with mm -hmm. have an issue with cutting away from it yeah. as a child of God. Somebody shall help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Mm -hmm. He gonna do it if you let him. Here, addicted means to be put under another's control. To appoint mutually agree upon. Wow. Now this is powerful. Watch this. To appoint one's own responsibility or authority that you hook or you took it upon yourself to do. You act them. You said what you said. Somebody shall, I have, I have authorized you. You came in agreement with the spirit of the lie that the enemy brought to you. You went there. You stayed connected right here with them, there, or whatever. You said what you said, and you acted upon it, but then you want to get upset with the outcome of it. Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. Somebody shout, I authorized it. I authorized it. And now, because you authorized it, you don't like the outcome. You don't like the results from what you chose to do. Don't look at me like that. Don't, don't look at me like that. That's the truth. Amen. Look at your neighbor, your neighbor. Yeah. Stop blaming. Stop blaming. And accept the fact. Accept the fact. We did it. We did it. Mm -hmm. I know you might not like me after this, but that's okay. You gotta love me. Gotta love me. It even calls some right now, right now, as I look out in, in, in the eyes of the ones of the soul. Some of you right now you get an attitude hearing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You get an attitude about hearing the truth about you. Yeah. Somebody shout truth. truth. When it's thrown to the ground, it's going to come back up truth. 